spring is finally here and that means I can get back to doing some more RC related things, which is awesome because I've been sitting on this box for months. Today we're going to unbox and take a quick look at the WL Toys A979. The last RC car I took a look at was the WL Toys A959. I was ridiculously impressed with that, except it didn't really have much in terms of off-road performance. The speed and everything was amazing, but off-road was just really lacking, and hopefully this one's going to make up for that. And actually, from what I'm reading, if you see the front of the box there, up to 70 kilometers per hour, which is about 43 miles per hour, means that it should be significantly faster. I don't know if I can really handle that, but we'll see. Normally I swap back and forth between the overhead camera and the main camera. This box is so large that I don't think I can do that at the moment, but that's okay. But let's go ahead and dive into the box. So of course you get the transmitter, you get a user guide, battery charger, specifically it mentions being for 7.4 volt batteries, a wall adapter, unfortunately not a US adapter so I'll have to find a different way to make this work, but it does 10 volts at 800 milliamps, and the included tool, which if memory serves me correctly someone told me this is actually for adjusting the wheels. Haven't used it on the previous car, probably won't be using it on this one. Coming back over to the transmitter, you can see over here we have throttle trim and steering trim have the traditional steering wheel, should be proportional steering and throttle, everything feels smooth. Big ol' power button here at the bottom. The controller actually is pretty much identical to the one for the A959, and it means it does take four AA batteries, not included. But getting to the crux of the issue as it were, and getting rid of all this cardboard mess, here it is, the WL Toys A979. Definitely looks the part in terms of being more of an off-road vehicle, quite a bit larger, wider, more significant tires to it. And yeah, the person in the comments was absolutely correct. This is gonna be used for taking the tires off if you need to. And there's a different size nut on the other end, so if you need to take other parts of the car off that are larger, gets the job done. Pull out all these little cotter pins, take a look under the hood as it were. So there you go, naked and exposed. We got a Velcro strap holding the battery in place, and as you can see it is a 7.4 volt 1500 milliamp hour battery. For the life of me I can't remember the name of this connector, but it just plugs in like that. And then you've got this white plug that you would plug it into the charger with, and of course just use this Velcro strap to strap it back down in place. Here's your motor, here's your on off switch, and it does appear that the battery has a little bit of charge to it. There's a red LED that's flickering now. The suspension feels pretty significant as well, and I will admit it, that's about as in depth as I can go on it. Just checking the site, this came from Litake.com. They say that it has a 540 brushed motor. It says around six minutes of runtime, which doesn't sound terribly long, although the battery is kind of small, and around 100 meter control range. From what I read on a different site, I think it was on Amazon, they mentioned 10 minutes of runtime and 150 minutes of recharge time. This one says the recharge time is two hours, so I guess I'll just have to see. This is a 1 18th scale car, if you couldn't tell from me holding it. I'm definitely looking forward to getting it out, taking it off road. So why don't we go do that? All right, and I'm out here with the A979. Hopefully the wind is not too bad. I've got a lavalier microphone on that should be blocking it, but here we go. Whoa, <laughs> you hit the gas and it really takes off. Doesn't seem to be having that much trouble with the grass though. I figure what I'll do is I'll go around in the grass here a little bit, then take it over to the little skate park area, and then eventually up that hill and just see how it does. So far though, I'm keeping it at about a third to a half throttle, and uh, that's going plenty fast enough, because if I go any faster, it does that. It just absolutely freaks out. That's one thing I can definitely say about it, compared to the A959 I looked at previously, it's got a whole lot more pick up and go. There's a speed pass. And because it is raised just a little bit more than the A959 and has a little bigger tires, it is handling the off-road a lot better. But it's got so much power that if I just floor it, it kicks out from under itself. It has too much power, even though as you will see when I pull the trigger, all four wheels are spinning, means it should have good grip. But it's just got so much, it just takes off. But the good thing is if you do it right, you can kind of right yourself as you're starting to flip. The turning radius is not that great on it either. So much power. Full throttle. Little brake there at the end. I will say this is a lot of fun. Although it's definitely pulling to one side or the other, and it's not consistent. And there it goes. It does seem to have a little bit of trouble turning and, well, turning in general. It'll turn, it just... There's so much power, it just wants to keep going straight. So its turning circle is really big. It 
take it straight up a hill. It'll just go. Of course, it's bouncing so much that it's kind of hard to get it to, to turn. But you know, if you take it a little bit slower, it does all right. Definitely getting the job done, I think. And with this much speed and power, I can definitely see how six minutes would be the limitation on the battery. But it can do some really cool things for a little car, a little buggy. But yeah, if you get going too, or if you try to get going too fast in the grass, it just spins because it has so much power but not a whole lot of grip. Even though the tires are bigger, they don't really have much grip to them. So I don't think I could actually make it up this hill if I really wanted to. Well, maybe we could. Now we hit too, too steep of an angle. But there we go. If anything, I would say just be mindful of the fact that there is so much power that you're going to have to take a second to slow down before you make a turn. Otherwise, you're just going to spin. Although, I think that is part of the fun, right? Oh, and it's just, it's dead. I'm not exactly sure if the battery's dead there or if it's just overheated because I touched the motor here and it's definitely quite hot to the touch. Even this plate on the bottom is hot to the touch. Minor update, I turned it off and back on. Still going super strong, so must have just overheated. So I was running it kind of hard, but that's where I'm gonna go and wrap it up today. The video that I recorded previously was about eight minutes. So six minutes does sound about right, because I did take some time in between having to flip it over and everything, but it was an awful lot of fun. So I'll put a link to where you can find it. Thanks so much to Lytake for sending this out for me to take a look at. Thanks to you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of it down in the comment section. I had a lot of fun though. I'm gonna keep bringing it back out here and I'll see you again next time.